Hey guys, so today I'm going to show you how to create this Rainy City acrylic painting. I did this on a 5 by 7 inch gesso board, but of course you could use any surface that you'd like. So to start with, I used Mars Black with a flat synthetic brush which I got from Cass Art. And I used this to just outline where the buildings in the background are going to go. This is quite a messy step, it doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to go over the edges in a different shade anyway later so you can neaten it up then, so don't worry if it doesn't look amazing to start with. I did use a reference photo for this painting so that's where I've got these abstract shapes which I'm filling in right now. So next I'm taking a tiny bit of titanium white and adding that into the black to create a very dark grey and I'm just putting this next to some of the other shapes to create more buildings. Now I'm adding even more white to make a lighter grey and I am making yet another building in the background. These shapes look really weird to start with but it's okay because they'll come together at the end. Um, so now I'm using a smaller brush and this is from Royal and Lang Nickel and I'm using this so I can get the edges a lot neater. So I'm just outlining and then filling in with that brush. Taking a lighter grey I'm going to add yet another weird shape into this painting. Um, I didn't wait for the layers to dry because I'm impatient, but I guess you could. But I also do like how it looks with the colours or shades blending in together. Taking a darker grey, I'm just adding this to the part of the painting which we just did and then I'm going to blend those two colours together. Keep calling them colours when they're definitely shades rather than actual colours. Now taking white with that light grey, I am going to start painting in the sky. I'm still using this smaller Royal and Lang Nickel flat brush just because it gives me more control over the neatness of the edges. For this part of the painting I realised that I had forgotten to paint in some of the buildings so I'm just outlining where those forgotten buildings are going to go and then I'll fill that in in a second. So taking that same dark dark grey that we did at the beginning I am just making another building there. Now taking in this Quinacridone burnt orange colour, I am making a different shade for the building. So I'm mixing this with some black and a tiny bit of white and then I am just filling in the last of my buildings. I say that this is the last but it's not because I realised I left a blank spot in my painting um, and then had to go in and add in another building later but you'll see that in the next minute or so. Now I'm just taking in a darker grey again to just add in some more abstract shapes which will again make more sense by the end of the painting. I think these shapes are supposed to be cars or, or traffic lights or something. I'm not 100% sure but I was just following the, the reference photo for this. So now taking white mixed in with the darker grey, I'm now going to start filling in the road, which is this giant white space. 
I didn't mix these colors very well together and I quite like how it came out. I like the unblended look of the road. I think it looks more blurry and more like a photograph or at least when the raindrops come on, I think it, it adds that effect better. But of course you could blend it better if you prefer that Anita style. Um, I just quite like how it looks with all of the different shades next to each other. And there we go, filling in that tiny building which I forgot about using that same dark brown shade. So now we're moving on to the lights. Um, so all of these colors will be listed in the description. Um, and these are all the colors of the lights that I'm gonna be using. I definitely over poured on the paint on the palette there. Anyway, so I'm just taking that dark red shade again and I'm just putting little circles in, mostly in the darker areas of this painting. It doesn't show up that well, on camera but these are supposed to be the blurry more faded lights in the background um, and then the brighter lights will come in later. So now taking this ready orange shade mixed with pink I'm going to continue adding circles. And then adding some white into that to make a peachy colour, again we're, we're continuing with the circles. It's at this point where I kind of went away from the reference photo because I more focused on putting these circles where I thought they would look good rather than trying to exactly match them to the reference picture. Adding more white, I've made a slightly off-white shade which is just basically a very very pale pink and again, circles. <laughs> Using this orangey yellow colour mixed with some white so that it becomes brighter, I am again adding circles. And then adding in some of that ready orange colour in there to make a more orange version of the shade. Maybe this time it's a colour rather than a shade. Um, I'm just putting this where I think it looks prettiest, essentially, where I think there's colour missing. Now adding in some white to get a very pale orange, I am continuing what I was doing before. And then taking the ready orange, mix it with pink. So this is the same colour that we used before, but I had added white to it so I could reuse it. And we're just doing the same thing. And again, we're making that peach colour again um, and doing the same thing. As I said, I couldn't reuse the colours which I'd used before because I'd added other colour to it. I've slowed this video down so you can see exactly where I'm putting the circles but you really don't have to follow where I've done it you could just do wherever you feel it looks best for you um, so there I just took some bright orange mixed with the yellowy orange to create a different shade of orange and I'm now going over some of those orange spots which I'd put on previously just so they appear a bit brighter Now going back to those grey shades that we'd used um, when making the background, I'm just adding circles using the mid grey which we use. And there's absolutely no uh, pattern to this at all, I just put them wherever I felt the picture was lacking something. So really you could just put these wherever you want.
So the last step of this part of the light um, is just adding plain titanium white circles around just to make some of the painting appear a bit brighter. Did that make sense? Just to make some areas of the painting appear a bit brighter. So now we're moving on to the rain. So I've here I've used a tiny bit of blue mixed with white and a tiny bit of black. And I'm just gonna start drawing some lines um, which will create the effect of water dripping down a window. So these lines don't have to be continuous. I think it looks better if they aren't. Um, it looks more natural. Um, and I'm just doing these completely randomly just around the canvas so you can put them wherever you want. So after this I am now adding in some shorter lines and also some raindrops which are essentially just random sized blobs on the canvas. Again there's no order to this at all, you just put them where you feel something is missing. Make sure you do have a range of different sizes of raindrops though because if they're all uniform it won't look accurate. So now I'm adding some depth to these raindrops by just outlining them in black. So the lines I am just full on outlining whereas the raindrops themselves I only outline the bottom left corner and the top right corner and this just makes the or it makes it look like there's a shadow there um, so they stand out from the page rather than lying flat. With the lines, make sure you outline both sides of the water line because if you only outline one side, it will look a bit strange. Trust me. So the last part of this painting is just to add some highlights to your water droplets. And I do this completely randomly. I just add little bits of white to both the lines and also the biggest raindrops. And there you have it, your finished painting. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And if you did, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more tutorials. If you like this painting, prints of it are available on my Etsy and my Depop and they will be linked below. See you next time!